welcome back to the Bitcoin Business Bureau. I'm your host, as always, Litecoin Leader. Today's yet another coin review, and we're retouching on one that was part of all, all Coinopoly, but it was not prominently shared that much, so I want to get it back out there, which is a, a coin. It's the top Oracle coin for DeFi called Chainlink, or abbreviated LINK. The ticker you often see is LINK, or L-I-N-K, uh, not to be um, confused with anything in the, in the video game world for Nintendo, but it's a different Chainlink. And the name really says it all. It is a, it's a, its job is to be an oracle. It is to link information from the outside world, outside the blockchain, or outside of the, the particular blockchain of interest, or even to the outside world and bring that information in. And just you know, it could be price information, it could be a weather reports, whatever it be, as far as data that the blockchain needs to execute smart contracts. Chainlink's job is to go get it and provide it. So that's the use case of the project. Uh, it's been a top 20 product for pretty much since in the onset. Um, it, it, again, it launched big. Uh, it's it's probably, it, it is the number one Oracle coin by a, a wide margin. I think number two is a um, is a UMA now, which didn't even exist or wasn't even really out there uh, back when I made this first video over the summer. I think it was around July 4th. And um, it, it's, it, like I said, it's, it's job is to bring independent information. It's an Ethereum-based coin. Um, there's some concerns with it for me, but let's dig into the news. Let's look at the charts and then we'll wrap up with our conclusions in the back as we always do. Just a quick reminder that nothing in this video is considered financial advice. I am not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Seek out your own advice and do your own diligence, do your own research. In order to really understand what Link's role is in decentralized finance or DeFi, we have to go over a few terms. First, decentralized finance. What is that all about? DeFi or decentralized finance means in doing financial things that are not with centralized entities like a Coinbase like or an exchange. A Coinbase, a Gemini, a Kraken, a Binance US, a Binance International. Uh, KuCoin, you name an exchange, that's a centralized entity. So the reason that people want to get away from centralized entities is because it's third-party risk. If Coinbase goes down, if Kraken goes down, or if Gemini has an issue, your trades are at risk or the coins you have on those exchanges are at risk. So the purest of about cryptocurrency are all about decentralization. They want to be their own bank. They don't want to rely on any third parties or have any counterparty risk. So how do you create a trustless situation where you can make trades or do orders or buy and sell crypto and the answer, uh, or without third party risk? And the answer is decentralized finance. So everyone's told, not your keys, not your coins. You want to have your coins and your keys into your own private wallet. The issue is if you want to do certain types of trades or orders, there are very limited ways to do that without using some type of third party. Now you can go into a swap site like a Uniswap or a Sushi Swap, Pancake Swap, all those different swap. All those require a third party. So to do something that is purely a decentralized exchange transaction, you need a few things. And one of those things that you need is an Oracle. What an Oracle does is it provides information to the blockchain or an app working with the blockchain that does not exist on the blockchain. Blockchains are meant to be all by themselves. So what an Oracle does, and uh, this article from Coindesk does a pretty good job of explaining it very briefly at the top, is an Oracle sends data from the outside world, such as the, a fact, like daily temperature, uh, number of votes, price of a coin, a sport, uh, a sports score, um, uh, and something that is information that's not available on the blockchain. It sends it to the blockchain, so that is information that's provided via a smart contract to be interact with the blockchain. So, the typical example is a smart contract. Now, a smart contract can be written such that to, to execute what's known as a, a limit order. So, if you have, if you go, go on Coinbase and you have a wallet that has 500 of USDC and it has 500 Cardano, you may want to say, I will sell my 500 Cardano if Cardano gets to $2. Or I may buy 500 Cardano if the price gets to $1 for or one per USDC. 
So how do you execute those things? On Coinbase, you would deposit your assets into Coinbase, creating a third-party risk because now you have to rely on Coinbase, and you put in a limit order saying, I want to do those two things. I want to sell 500 Cardano if, I, if it gets to $2, or I will buy 500 Cardano at a, at a cost of one per U, one USDC, and I will put the order in with my USDC. So there's two limit orders that you put into the Coinbase system. To do that outside of a centralized entity with a decentralized exchange or a DEX, you need information that is outside of the blockchain. So the blockchain may know the price of a coin. Uh, excuse me. It may know how. It, it may. It needs to know how many coins you have. It needs to know what you have available, and it needs to be able to record things onto the blockchain. So the outside information is what's in your wallet, such as how many USDC or how many Cardano, and what is the price of this coin. They need independent confirmation of a price. So in Oracle, the number one feature that an Oracle does is it provides outside information of what is the current price in this example, Cardano. What is the price of Cardano? How do we know what the price of Cardano is? We can't tell a blockchain, hey, go look at CoinGecko or look at CoinMarketCap. It's not, that's not a function for the blockchain. A DAP or a, de a, a decentralized application can be written to do that using a smart contract. So you can write a smart contract that provides the contents of your wallet, the the, the a, a function to go and check the price of an of an asset and then and if then type statement which is if cardano reaches two dollars then sell my 500 cardano or if cardano gets to one dollar per or one cardano for one usdc then purchase then take the 500 usdc and exchange that for the cardano all those can be written through a smart contract but the information that's needed to be provided is the contents of your wallet, which you can provide on your own, and the price of the coin. The price of the coin is where Chainlink comes in. Chainlink provides independent evaluation of the price of a coin. That is function number one. Now, if you look at the 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 web page for Chainlink, Chainlink is Chainlink is clearly the number one oracle out there. It has first mover advantage. It is the biggest coin that's out there in the Oracle space. Here's a list of the Oracles right now uh, before I delve into the Chainlink page. Chainlink is clear in a way the number one Oracle by far. It is mark, It's the number 15 coin. Market cap is eight and a half billion dollars. The second one is really banned protocol. It's like not even 250 million. So it's more than 20, more than 30 times smaller than Chainlink. So Chainlink is definitely the number one Oracle that's out there providing price information to decentralized exchanges. And it also has the benefit of it's on the Ethereum blockchain. So it has access to all the prices of all the contract coins, all the ERC-20s, all the NFTs that run on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, Chainlink is building further and further. And I'll go into that a little bit on the, the page. Uh, and it, just, it starts to explain, you know, you can contact the outside world through a smart contract with a function like Chainlink and provide outside data to the blockchain for the purpose of executing a smart contract. So that's used in a number of different, 80% uh, of all the dApps that are running in DeFi need an Oracle. So an, an Oracle is a huge value and it really, without an Oracle, DeFi or decentralized finance basically could not function. So lending with Aave, Synthetic, Celsius, Ampleforth, all these different uh, companies that partner with Link, you couldn't function without an Oracle so that you could have, you know, if you're providing interest or if you're providing returns on an investment, again, you need to know the price of a coin. So you need to know independently what is the price of Cardano, Link, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on. So that is what an Oracle provides. Digging further on Chainlink's page, you got, it, it explains a lot about what it does. Again, smart contracts, lots of DeFi and examples. Um, and it, it shows the roadmap of like you can work with NFTs, you can get random numbers, do a blockchain lottery, and so on. So there's many different use cases for an Oracle, but 80% of all dApps in DeFi need an Oracle. And the number one Oracle in the space, without question, is Chainlink. So that that's the only thing you know about. Like If you know just the, just the elevator speech for Chainlink, what is Chainlink? It is the number one Oracle in DeFi, and it provides price information to smart contracts. That's the number one takeaway.
Now, I provided this chart before in a couple other videos, but here's another. If you go to Coin CoinGecko and look up Chainlink, you will find a button here. That's the Oracle button. You click that button, and you will wind up getting like the top Oracle list. And it'll show you the 30-ish Oracles that they track and categorize, and it shows that Chainlink is so far out ahead of everyone else. It's probably 80% of the Oracle space, if not more. By like, The rest of them don't even add up to 20%. So Chainlink is the number one uh, Oracle that's in DeFi. It's it's what everyone bases off of. It's the number one. When they're almost, almost synonymous. That when you think of Oracles, you think of Chainlink. So a couple, of, I dug a little bit more information. I think a lot of people are familiar with Chainlink. It's a top 20 coin. Most people have heard about it. It's been a huge boon for the last two years and help really kick off the DeFi space and make it what it is today. And it's still nascent. It's still growing. It's still just getting started. So Chainlink has a lot of upside. Um, a couple of videos that I walked through. I walked through uh, LA Trades Crypto. Talked about He talks about Link a lot. So does uh, Coin Bureau, um, which is right here. And there's a third strong video that comes out from the Exodus Wallet team that talks about what Chainlink is. Uh, I will include one last video. There's tons of video on Link and Oracles. So while you may be familiar with the term of Oracle from a few of our popular movies in the past, but unlike the Matrix, we're not looking for one person to tell us our fate here. What we're looking for is the Oracle to give us the price information and information that's not available on the blockchain to the blockchain via a smart contract. And that's what Chainlink does as well as some other Oracles. But the number one Oracle in all of DeFi and all of crypto right now is link so that's the simple answer you can delve into hundreds of videos and articles about what chain link is but the the nutshell is that it gives the information to the blockchain for it to make smart contract decisions and now it's time to take a look at the charts for link so taking a look at the charts for chain link before we get into that we want to look at coin market cap and see where chain link is today it's just inside the top 20. It's the number 20 coin. It's it's a, a, a whisker up above die in the top 20, uh, right next to Uniswap. But the potential is there. I mean, the chain link, there's plenty of room for it to grow or triple. If it tripled in price, just pick, not financial advice, just picking a number. If it tripled to go about 27 to 28 billion, that would put it right between Terra and Avalanche inside the top 10. It could, that could, I could definitely see that scenario happening. But let's take a look at the charts first. Looking at this price on, I see two different things. One, when I look against Bitcoin, and when I look against the U.S. dollar. So I'm going to draw what I think I'm seeing on the Elliott Wave Impulse. I kind of see that uh, there was a wave one, and a wave two, a wave three, a wave four, and a wave five. Then what happens after that is there's a retrace. And the retrace, the correction wave. So now you're looking at one, A, B, C. Okay. Or it could be that we're, you know, that's A, B, C. Or it could even be that we're currently at C now. That's B. And this is A. That's entirely possible. That's another possibility here. So, in the big scheme of things, um, it, two different things. You could say that this is a wave one, that's wave two, or that we're about to launch into another wave one. Either way, you, you, we're, we're about to head upwards, it seems, just from the general trend. I didn't draw a trend line here, but if I go over to the USDT chart, I can start talking about that. But first, I want to highlight, peak was in August. So, if we go to the August 2020, if you go over the USDT chart, August of 2020, All right, I can't be right. Uh, yeah, it was the highest against Bitcoin in August of uh, 2020, and then it hasn't done so great. It really rode the coattails of Bitcoin since then. So going back to August of 2020, the price of Chainlink. This is a weekly. These are both weekly charts. Sorry to keep jumping back and forth. I want to show everybody that these are weekly charts. So if I go to August of 2020. There's your peak in there, and it's about 19 bucks, which is about where it is now. So you're almost like, you can make a very strong case that based on these charts, 
that we are basically at a at a, a great entry point. Why didn't that line draw? Horizontal line, please. Thank you. So you can see that here was you know there was the top and there's the bottom. So the top back in August, which was this top right in here against Bitcoin, lines up to here. So now looking yes against the dollar. Again, you could have a one, two, I could draw it again. Takes a little while to draw, so let's, if I could say one, two, three, four, five. And then something of a retrace back in here. So it could dip a little more. Um, I do see somewhat, th somewhat, oops, somewhat of a trend line. I don't know why it scrolled that much. I see somewhat of a trend line that's, uh, that's basically that this, there seems to be a lot of support, a lot of volume here. So the volume against Bitcoin was there at 3,000 sats and we're at 4,000. So doesn't seem to be a lot of downside risk for Chainlink right now. So if you're sitting on some some gains or you're looking to get into Chainlink, again, as always, not financial advice, but this looks, looks like a good entry point. But where could it go? I'm going to look at the, uh, the weekly and I'm going to do a retrace from wave five. And just say that uh, let's do a fib retracement from here down to this line out there. Now, roughly speaking, I would think that we could this could be a, a giant wave one and a giant wave two. That would put the targets at the 2.6 level, which would be so if I put the horizontal lines in, it's all H. There's one, let's do another one, get up to here. You can see the targets are between 72 and 105, give or take. So call it 70 to 100. Current price, $19. So definite room to more than uh, almost 5x, between 3 and 5x in the next bull run. I could see that happening for Chainlink. I think I said that recently for Polkadot. So I think that both these could have significant move upwards in the uh, in a bull run. And uh, you see a 3 to 5x in, in USDT or a dollar equivalent. And then against Bitcoin, let's see the peak there was almost 16,000 sats and we're at 4,000. So 3 to 4x against Bitcoin. So it's a significant move upwards is possible in the next 3 to 6 months for Chainlink. Not financial advice, but what I'm seeing based on the charts is that we seem to be at a good entry point where there's not a lot of downside risk, but there's a lot of upside appreciation possibility. Just look at the volume, for example. The volume back here, the volume was huge back here when, you know, 3,000 sats. And then the volume has really traced off as the prices come down. People are not selling Chainlink. They are holding it. Same thing on this chart. You see, well, it's a little off scale there. But most of the volume, again, predates now. I mean, the volume here is much less significant than prior to. So, that said, it looks like um, it looks like Chainlink is in a position where it could go up significantly in the next bull run for altcoins. So that's what charts are telling me. Um, not financial advice as always, but let's let's wrap this up and give a rating for this coin. So there you go. There's the information on Chainlink. There's a, like the beginnings of it. A little bit dated stuff on the on the coin on the coin market cap. Sorry for that in the news, but. It is what it is for editing, but we're talking new stuff now. So Link's price is more in the 20s. It's got a lot of, I think it's 25 bucks. Uh, it's It's got a potential to go three or four X from here. Um, not financial advice, of course, but again, in the, in the DeFi space and the crypto space, a three to four X move, especially during a bull run is almost expected. So if you're expecting a bull run in the next six months, then Link should carry on a triple or quadruple type move. So again, not financial advice, but keep that in mind. And this is the number one coin in DeFi uh, as far as uh, provide, being an oracle and providing information to all the different blockchains. It's a necessary need for all like these swap protocols and, and other things. So there's two knocks on uh, Link and it's still, they don't change the same as when I launched the video in July. Number one, it's an Ethereum coin. And I still have concerns over Ethereum and how that product's moving, the high gas fees and so on. Uh, and number two, is that there's lots of competition. I mentioned UMA, there's Band, there's uh, DOS, there's Zap, there's Teller, all these different oracles that are out there. And there's even like these different platforms like Cardano, Polkadot, 
um, Zillica, they may be building their own oracles. So I know that Adam has banned. So like, there's probably, there, so I'm sure there's more than one that, but the number one right now, and the leader in the clubhouse for sure is Chainlink. So with all that said, those, with those caveats, I still give it a four out of five. I think it's a strong project. You could even lean towards a four and a half uh, until there's a real competitor out there for an Oracle. Chainlink is the, the number one uh, Oracle, no question. And it's necessary in the DeFi space, which is growing by leaps and bounds. So lots said today. I do like Chainlink. I gave it my rating of four out of five. So what do you think? Let's leave comments down below and let me know what you think about Chainlink. What's your opinion on it? How do you like it? So use hashtag link down the bottom. And, uh, Here's your question for the day. Where do you think, uh, how long is it going to take for this to quadruple? How long do you think it's going to go 4X for, for Chainlink to go up uh, by 4X? Let me know in the comments. So with all that said for today, I'm going to close the drill in the bureau, tell you to follow the leader, and I'll see you next time.